Right, so today it's the first part of the test way. Look at that for a view. I was supposed to do this walk yesterday, but it was chucking it down, so delayed the day. And I'm now walking from here down to Romsey uh, to complete the first part. The second part I've already done. So, uh, camping overnight somewhere. Looking forward to it. Oh, this is the official start of the test way on Gallows Down. It's very windy, but the views are absolutely lovely. Well, I'm definitely on the right track. Yesterday was the day I was supposed to do this walk, but it was absolutely chucking it down all day. So I delayed. And I'm here today, and it's glorious sunshine. We've got about 15, 16 miles to walk. It's currently about half 11. Then I'm camping overnight and walking the 20, 21 miles down into Romsey and being picked up by my wife, who's kindly dropped me off this morning. At Gallows Down, where the test way starts, I was a little bit surprised to see so many people. There was some walk a couple walking in front of me, a couple behind me. There was some motorbikes and a couple of horses. And I thought this is going to get a little bit crowded if this is the way the test way is. But very quickly, when you turn off that ridge, everybody disappears. At the moment, all I have for company is beautiful views. I think I'm going to enjoy the next couple of days. Oh, it's a little bit of a climb up to Manor House at Lincoln Holt. So far, it's been pheasants and monk jack that I've disturbed, but it's been really lovely. Signage is spot on. Enjoy myself. Well, I like Lincoln Holt. Although you're walking on the road, it's not busy. And there's grass birds most of the time. The sports pavilion seems to have a tap on the outside. I didn't use it, but it's got enough water. But there was a box say, full of apples saying, please help yourself. And I did have one and they were absolutely gorgeous. It did appear to be the weekly day for doing your lawns. Everybody seemed to be cutting their lawns in Lincoln Holt. But very pretty place. And yeah, like that a lot. Yeah, lovely old track that I'm currently on. There's plenty of blackberries in the hedgerow lots of insects look at that god that's a riot of color a lovely shady spot for a bit of lunch with a built-in seat as i know that i'm being picked up at two o'clock tomorrow at ramsey there isn't really a lot of point in blasting out the miles <clears throat> which is good because it means I can chill out and relax and try and just enjoy the walk sometimes it can be just trying to complete the miles and missing out on what's around you it's absolutely beautiful around here because I know I'm camping tonight I'm sort of my mind's looking for somewhere to camp and I saw this spot over there which looks beautiful but uh, actually I know that the winds that are coming tonight are southwesterly and that's southwesterly so I think if I was to camp here I'd probably be camping over there to get some protection from the trees but I'm not camping here I've got another 10 miles and plenty of hours to do it in so, yeah 
really enjoying the test way. The signage is brilliant. Uh, tracks are easy. One thing I do need to think about is some water. A couple of villages coming up and I always find that churches are a good place to try and get some water from. I can get used to this relaxed way of walking. See quite a few buildings that are out walking. I wonder if this was an old aircraft hangar. The signage at the moment is so good that I'm not even having to refer to the GPX that I downloaded from the Long Distance Walkers Association. Uh, the paths are easy. Really enjoying it. Really am. Uh, I hoped I would because when I did the second part from Romsey down to Ealing Thai, I really enjoyed that as well. Uh, so I was I was hopeful that this half wouldn't spoil it. And so far I may only be seven miles in or whatever. But yeah, it's really nice. That's the view I've got at the moment. I can hardly complain, can I? Drop down to Ibthal. Seems to be where thatch cottages congregate. It's very pretty. Lots of thatch cottages. And the manor house is definitely worth a, worth a second look at. There you have a view of Hurstbourne Tarrant, about nine miles in from the top of this test way. Very pretty, but no water. The church has gone eco, so they have a water bat, and the community centre have water for dogs in a bowl, but their tap was jammed, whether intentionally or otherwise should be somewhere to get water in the next town. I see there's a watercress farm um, which always means fresh water so I've got a water filter on this I'm not overly worried. It's interesting to come across this little small hole. Hello you! How are you doing? Oh, look it doesn't look too happy. All day the views have just been absolutely huge. This section after Stoke Hill Farm. It's very good that it's in the shade. But they really have gone to town with the stones. This must be about the fifth one that I've come across so far. Walking down into Swampton now. Got about four or five miles to go. That hedge over there. Try to take my hat away. Gust of wind went and took it over the other side. So I had to quickly run up and get it, assuming nobody would see me. Of course, the owner of the house was there, which was very understanding, luckily. Just walking down into St. Marybourne and thought I'd found a local who could direct me towards water. Is that a sign that I need water? Probably. At St Marybourne, there seems to be a bit of a contradiction in the testway signs. One set of signs takes you to the playing fields. One does a loop through the main street through St Marybourne. Which you choose is up to you. Beautifully clean water. That's my water supply sorted out. Just put it through a filter. Job done. Right, I've now got about four miles to go till I start looking for somewhere to pitch a tent. But I have all my water so I'm, and I've drunk a load, so I'm well happy. After Marison Bourne, there's a fair bit of track and road walking. Nothing bad. And then you start seeing the cornfields. I've got about just over a mile till I start looking for somewhere to camp tonight. I was contemplating going on a bit further, but 
because there's a village just after that it would mean me walking for at least another three miles after that and it's about 20 past five so why not be kind to myself and it's a lovely evening well that's 17 miles in from the top of the test way I found a nice little place for me to sleep tonight it'll look exactly the same as that when I leave it very early in the morning really been impressed so far uh, I just hope tomorrow is more of the same to be honest well it's now 10 past 6 in the morning ready to set off for 21 miles down to Romsey as you can see leave no trace lovely night's sleep never knew foxes bark so much though hmm. back on the trail one of the great things about wild camping when you're walking a trail is literally it takes you seconds to get back onto the trail and it's lovely out here this morning I don't think you can see it but there's a couple of rabbits frolicking in that field and I'm going up this way just discovered another advantage with being early in the morning you get to surprise the monk jacks uh, don't normally see many monk jacks they're quite shy creatures but I saw one yesterday and I've seen one this morning as well which is uh, it's lovely to see they're very keen on you knowing the right way around here they've reinforced the test way signs with a neon and in the background I don't know if you can see it it says no public right of way that's fair enough I suppose keeps me on the straight and narrow I didn't want to deviate anyway to be honest I think it's fair to say that Middleton is asleep there's a pub for sale if anyone wants it there's a path the road's quiet and the houses are pretty what more can I ask for first thing in the morning Well, somebody's keen to see me. Hello, you two. There's some lovely old buildings on this place. Around Forton. Again, it's a place that has a, a lot of thatch cottages and free apples. Well, the weather seems to be trying to do something. This is up out of Frotton and from this vantage point I can see hundreds of pheasant and a couple of deer, two rabbits, just magical. On the map, Ladies House Cops look like a good alternative place for me to camp tonight. Apart from the fact that it has a very large and loud sawmill I think I made the better choice to be honest After Ladies House Cops you come across these buildings in Paddington Cops which to my mind look like battery battery egg farms or battery chicken farms um, don't look to be used anymore and it all looks to be getting reclaimed by nature there's a lot of evidence that this area was once heavily worked for something big steel gates all the paths are concrete which is nice and you can see there's been some extensive planting of Lot. So, yeah. The views have changed a bit since yesterday. It's still very nice.
Yeah, there's something a bit different between walking on a long one day and long, walking on a couple of days of camping in the middle. It's taken about five miles this morning for my body to realise that this is actually happening and stop complaining. The odd aches and pains, but yeah, about five miles now. So I keep seeing little um, mice run across the path here. Very distracting. Really old track, this one. It's actually called New Barn Lane. Heading down into Whirlwell. Bit of a sucker for this type of path. This one just takes you along the edge of Whirlwell. Oh, so it's like Narnia. Well, I can't tell you very much <clears throat> about the town of Whirlwell, apart from saying that the people who live there have done a very good job on keeping the path very clear, very well signposted and well away from the centre of Whirlwell. Well, 23 miles into the test way and this is the first time certainly that I've crossed the test but actually that I've had anything like a decent look at it I think I could have got a look about five miles ago look at that clear water beautiful very informative board for chill bottom Cow common. Hey, I wouldn't mind seeing a kingfisher. So a while back it looked like it was going to rain, so I deployed the patented method for stopping rain. Faffing around, getting a waterproof on, putting on the rucksack cover, and lo and behold, rain has stopped. We even have some blue sky coming out. So I've travelled 23 miles, it would be 21 to Totten, but I'm not going that far because I've already walked that bit and now we're on a disused railway. The nature reserve was really nice to walk on. Uh, so nice I actually took the wrong path and in an attempt to stay on it longer. As you can see the patented method for warding off rain has worked and the waterproof has now been removed. I've got the test just through the hedge to my right. Yeah, all is right with the world. There you go, just to prove it. Looking at the map, I've got an opportunity to make up time. Looks like I'm on this footpath now, all the way down into Stockbridge. This bit of the path is quite good for zoning out and trying to catch up some speed. I'm quite amazed at how much my speed is down today. I'm down to about 2.7 miles per hour. Normally I'm at this time of the day I'd be up at about three. Uh, it doesn't sound a lot but yeah it does make a difference. But this path is nice. You can hear the A3057 but rarely see it and it's certainly not intrusive. Unfortunately, you can rarely see the Test River on the other side as well. Rather disappointingly, the road just before Stockbridge and the path do converge, so you do end up walking along the road for half a mile or so. It's not that bad, it could be worse. The path is really wide, it's part of the National Cycle Scheme. You're rewarded for your patience with road walking by going down this lovely little path that I believe goes through to a wreck after Stockbridge. I just realised I'm back on this Dishes Railway and I'm on it for the next four and a half miles down to Noah Brook which although it's really nice for walking does not give me the massive views and wonderful cinematic stuff that I was able to 
cake yesterday. Not helped by the fact that it's actually slightly drizzly at the moment. So far today I would say that this walk doesn't have the the obvious beauty of yesterday uh, and the easy to spot sort of huge landscapes and all the rest. It's a little bit harder to see it when you're walking on a track like this because uh, you can get a little bit soul destroying. But looking at the trees, the berries, the old buildings, the bits that really don't video very well for a GoPro, unfortunately. Um, there is a lot to look at that. I mean, look at that tree that's fallen down there. What on earth is going on? So there is beauty to be had today. You've just got to be looking for it. And I think because I'm a little bit tired than I was yesterday, I did initially find it a little bit harder. But I've changed my socks, had some water, had some energy bars, and yeah, it's growing on me. I like the way somebody's made the railway sleepers into a bench. That's very pleasant. As is a view of the River Test. After eight miles of walking on the railway line, I'm finally leaving it behind. I know I'm going to regret it shortly. The sign's hidden up there. But I could really do with a change. My ankles and knees are screaming out for a bit of change in elevation. Oh, hold on to the hat. This is all getting a bit blowy. Oh. That's actually somebody's garden. Now we're going up here. Not much change in elevation, but it's a change. As we come up to Montesquieu and the National Trust maintain properties. The number of people increases, but the pass ain't half good. Right, just out of Montesford. I've got five miles to go. I've just arranged that my pickup will be there in two hours. So that's doable, but no dawdling. At Kimbridge, we've got a bit of road walking. It's not much, but it's really not fun. Well, that may have only been 100 yards long. But the test way sign has never been so welcome. At Allbridge, there is a bit more road walking after a pleasant bit of forest. But this time there is a lot of uh, side grass, which makes it useful. You just have to switch from side to side occasionally to, uh, to get it all. An interesting bit of walkway. Tells me what this place is like in uh, a bit of flood. I'm about two miles from Romsey now. Currently trying to work out whether with two miles to go it's worth putting on my waterproofs for this slight bit of rain. Every time I think now nah, I won't bother it gets a little bit harder. I think it's a war of attrition. Yeah you guessed it. Ten seconds later it really started chucking it down, gave in, put on the waterproofs and now it stopped raining. At Crowlands, there appears to be a discrepancy. My GPX showed one thing, 
The signs on the ground showed another thing, but I actually think the GPX was right. Uh, that's where I should have come down, but I actually came from over there. There's a quarry which means that the path gets diverted. It says danger quarry working. I think that's going to be dangerous. So, we're out here. And how quickly we're back into countryside from the quarry workings. Since Hillbury Farm, the signage which had been brilliant has been, well, I think I've only seen one sign. Um, yeah, it's not really, I don't know what's happened. Okay, that wasn't the signage's fault. The reason there wasn't the sign on the path I was on is because it wasn't the test bike. Oh. The actual sign was around the corner. But this is a very old wood, very nice wood. The path is very well laid out. Yeah, yesterday was all farms and open fields and massive views. And today has been tracks and hedges and woodland. Uh, I couldn't have planned it as two separate walks that way if I'd have tried, to be honest, and it wasn't intentional. The stile is over there, and there's a huge bunch of cows right in front of it. See all these cows here? Right behind this bunch is the stile. Come on, move. Move! 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 Well, Cow did not understand the word move, did you, Cow? I don't want you following me. At Sadler's Mill, there appears to be some building work going on. So we have a diversion. Oh, I think it just goes round in a little U here. Bridge that was closed when I did Testway Part 2. You can see why they were redoing it now. It's obviously for all the building work that's going on. But they've done it very well. Looks very nice. Well, this has been the test way part one. If you enjoyed it, please like, please comment, please subscribe. Or, as this is exactly the point where part two starts, you can always go and watch that. Until next time, stay safe.